there a word from the Lord? Get your phone, your iPad, your notepad and pen, and of course, old school, your Bible. Let's sit back, relax, as we dig into the Word of God. Yes, there is a word from the Lord. Well, hello everybody and welcome once again to this special time in God's Word. I'm Bishop Sheldon V. Newton coming to you from Jesus Christ Centered Ministries International located right here in beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. We're so glad to have you with us today. We want to send a special shout out to Jesus Christ Centered Ministries members and partners. Hey, you're helping to make it happen as we take His Word to the world. We also want to send a shout out to all who are listening to us in the family islands of the Bahamas, um, in the United States of America, in, in um, England, or in China, Japan, Australia, um, to wherever you're from. We're just glad that you tune, you tune in to listen as we share God's word today. What, shall we bow a moment, a moment in prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We ask you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And we pray in Jesus' name, give us eyes to see what we have not yet seen, ears to hear what we have not yet heard, and hearts to understand. Increase us in faith, we pray, according to your word. And we thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been discussing the subject of concerning spiritual things, and we have been going through the entire book of First Corinthians. We have already covered from chapters 1 straight to chapter um, 11. We are now in chapter 12, dealing with gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Um, so in chapter 12 and verse 1, if you remember, the Apostle Paul said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant or misinformed or uninformed or unintelligent. In other words, God wants us to oper understand the operations of his spirit. So in verse 4 it says, Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations or different ministries or different offices but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. And verse 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So we've been looking at these particular manifestations and we found out um, that these nine manifestations um, um, based on uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses um, 8 through 11, 8 through 10, these nine manifestations are able to be divided into three categories, all right, or three classifications. And they are, there are three that are gifts of revelation. These are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Then there are three that can be classed as um, inspirational gifts. These are the gift of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Then there are three that are known and, and can be classified as power gifts. These gifts do something. Um, and they are the gift of special faith, the working of miracles and gifts of healings. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at it again, there are three gifts or manifestations that reveal something. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. There are three gifts or manifestations that say something by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The gift of prophecy, diverse tongues, kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. And then there are three gifts that do something. They are the gift of special faith, the working of miracles and gifts of healing. So you have three that reveal, three that say, and three that do. Praise the Lord. And so we've been looking in particular for the last two weeks at the gift of prophecy. And today we want to wrap this particular manifestation up by talking concerning um, how to judge prophecy, how to judge whether a person is prophesying in church or whether a person is saying they're giving a personal word to somebody. And we said to you already, there's a difference between um, the simple gift of prophecy and then the ministry of the prophet or the prophetess, you see. And if you remember, we already pointed out that uh, with, the ministry, with the gift of prophecy, just the simple gift of prophecy, According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 of verse 3, it's not my opinion, it's what the Bible says. It says, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation 
and comfort. So the simple gift of prophecy has no revelation in it um, in and of itself. It is the Spirit of God inspiring someone, moving someone, coming upon someone so that they will speak to edify the saints, to exhort and encourage the saints, and to bring comfort, a word of comfort to the saints, you see? Uh, and so uh, uh, um, many people are used in that manifestation, and any Christian can be used in any of these manifestations of the Spirit, but many Christians are used in that manifestation sometimes without even being aware that they're being used. Sometimes, you know, they may just get a special urge to encourage someone, a special unction to inspire someone, a special uh, uh, um, word, uh, um, urge and inspiration and motivation to bring um, a word of comfort to someone. Uh, and much of the time, when those words are flowing out of you, not words telling people you call to be this or you call to do that, but just words that uh, um, inspire and, and build up and encourage. And you know, when those words are flowing out of you and, and after you leave, you're there saying, wow, wow, you know, uh, um, um, those words just flowed out of me. Uh, um, you know, a lot of times it's because the Spirit of God came upon you and you were prophesying. No, you weren't going around saying you're called to be this and you're called to be that because um, that's really not what the gift of prophecy does. The gift of prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 3, we're staying with the scripture, is given to bring a word of comfort, to bring a word of inspiration, um, um, exhortation and to bring a word of edification you see and um, so um, I, I, I believe that a lot of times these manifestations are in operation even when people think that oh we're not saying this today or not saying that today and even when people may not even be aware uh, um, of their manifestation you can have a word of knowledge in dream form where God shows you someone working something against you and you may not realize it's a word of knowledge. All you'll say is, I had a dream. But God can be giving you a word of knowledge in dream form. These manifestations of the Spirit are not limited to you knowing whenever they're operating. The Spirit of God can flow these through you. All He needs you to do is be available. He can flow these gifts through you to bring ministry to other people and even to minister to you as well praise the name of the Lord but we, we already talked concerning the ministry of the prophet that the, the ministry of the prophet or the prophetess which is different from someone just prophesying any believer God can use them to prophesy but when it comes to that ministry of the prophet or prophetess um, they will have more than just the gift of prophecy in operation yes they'll have that gift but with it they'll also have the word of wisdom which reveals future events and they'll also have the word of knowledge which reveals the past or the present and they may have the gift of discerning of spirits which reveals what's going on in the realm of the spirit you see and they they may have the gift gifts of healings because Elisha had a healing ministry and how do I know that because when Naaman had leprosy. Um, he had a slave girl who was a Jew um, who told her mistress, Naaman's wife, said, I wish my master was over there in the land of Israel. He went to the prophet in Israel because if he had gone to the prophet in Israel, surely he would have recovered or healed him of his leprosy. So Elisha apparently had a reputation of a healing ministry. So I believe that that also goes with the true ministry of the prophet or the prophetess, you see? But um, um, let me say something else here that I believe um, will help you. I, I pray that it doesn't offend any. But a real prophet or a real prophetess is um, a person who is called to one of the fivefold offices in the body of Christ. They are minister of the gospel. As a matter of fact, that is the primary ministry of a real prophet or prophetess of the Lord, whether it was Old Covenant or New Covenant. One of the main pri priorities of the true prophet or prophetess of God is that they were a preacher or a teacher or a preacher and a teacher of the Word of God. They were in ministry uh, and their ministry was preaching the Word of God and moving by manifestations of the Spirit to call God's people back to Him. Now you read it for yourself in the Old Covenant, look at the ministries of the prophets and prophetesses and look at the ministries of the prophets and prophetesses in the New and you will see that that was and is their primary ministry. They are ministers of the Word of God, ministers of the Gospel and then manifestations of the Spirit flow through them to confirm the Word of God that they preach, you see? 
And so I, I pray that that helps us to um, deal with some of this confusion uh, um, as it relates to this particular ministry. And I know we have much more that we need to say in this regard, and we will, because we're going to get to the genuine ministry of the prophet as we hit down there in verse number 27 and 28 of First Corinthians chapter 12. All right? But let me give you eight steps for judging personal prophecy. And this is whether a person is prophesying to a, a local church or whether a person is prophesying uh, uh, um, to an individual. Because there are people who are operating in the ministry of the prophet and the prophetess, and they may give you a personal word. Now, I, I will encourage you regarding this. Live your life by the written word of God. Okay? Do not depend on the words of just a prophet or a prophetess. You need to live your life by the Word of God. And if you live your life by the Word of God, and God wants to use somebody to confirm something to you or to say something to you that will confirm what He's been dealing with you about, then that's fine. Okay? But don't live your life by prophecies because the Bible does not teach that we are to live by prophecies. The Bible teaches we are to live by the Word of God. So aim to read your Bible every every day, aim to pray every day, and aim to walk in the light of the written word. And if any of these other things take place, praise the Lord for them as long as they stay in the boundary of these eight steps I'm about to give you, where the word of God teaches us how to de judge personal prophecies and how to judge the ministry of prophets, whether they're genuine or not, because they are, according to the New Testament and even in the Old, there are many false prophets, okay? And you need to know how to discern to know whether the person is a true or a false prophet. You need to know. Um, Jesus said that in these last days, one of the main signs that we need to watch out for is we had better take heed that no man deceive us. That's found in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 5. Take heed that no man deceive you. Why? He said, for many shall come. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. The word Christ is a Greek word. It actually comes from the Greek word Christos. It's, it means the anointed or the anointed one. Many are gonna come saying um, that they are anointed. And Jesus said they'll deceive many. And he went on to talk there and say uh, um, that there'll be false prophets, you see. Uh, um, in the book of 1 John chapter four, he's talking about many false prophets uh, um, are in the world, you see. And so we need to be able to discern uh, um, when people are really from God and when they are not. So here are these eight steps, and I don't know if I'm going to get through all eight of them. It all depends on the time, because I want to carry you through some scriptures as well to um, help you see that I'm not just talking uh, um, out of my head here, but that the Word of God has much to say along these lines. Um, the first step for judging personal prophecy is, is it in line with the written Word of God? Is it in line with the written word of God? The written word of God is the more sure word of prophecy. There's nothing that trumps the written word of God. And listen to me, if it's not in line with the written word of God, if it is contrary to the written word of God, it is not God. It is just that simple, all right? Don't try and complicate that and don't try and argue with me about it. If it is not in line with the Bible, the written word of God, it is not God. Well, that prophet has told me I'm married to the wrong person and I need to leave my spouse because I'm supposed to be married. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's the devil trying to deceive you. God will never tell you such a thing. That's the devil, all right? Because that's not in line with the written word of God. Are, are you seeing what I'm saying here? If it's not in line with the written word, it is not God. Now, let me read a scripture here to you from the book of Peter. 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter chapter number 1. And Peter here, um, um, if you read from verse number 16, shares how him and um, James and John had an experience, in, and it's recorded there in Matthew chapter uh, 17, and many of us know it as the Mount of Transfiguration experience, you see? But um, he shares concerning that, how that they heard, saw the glory of God, and they heard the audible, how they heard the audible voice of God uh, um, speaking on that mountain, you see? And when God Almighty, the Father, spoke and said, this is my son, whom, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him, you see? And he, but he points out here, in the book of Second Peter chapter 1, that the word of God, the word of God that were written down by the prophets, the word of God 
is was more sure than even that audible voice that they have heard had heard look at this verse number well you can read from verse 16 where he talks about that well let me start there for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but by eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received from god the father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased now this is a miraculous supernatural experience you read it in matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 6 where the very glory of God was on that mountain Jesus face was shining like the Sun uh, and his garment became white as the light and Moses and Elijah had appeared and they were standing there talking with the master Wow and the glory cloud of God came and covered um, Peter James and John and the voice of God spoke and said this is my son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him Wow what an experience <laughs> Wow notice this though for he received, Jesus received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And of course in Matthew it said, hear ye him. Now notice this though. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. But watch this. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Well, hold up, Peter. What to be more sure? than having such an experience and hearing the audible voice of God. And whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this voice that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy talking about the prophecy of the scripture now for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter said, the word of God, the, the word that came to the prophets that were written down, the prophecy of the scriptures was more sure than even the experience he had of hearing the audible voice of God on that mountain. The written word was more sure. Wow. My brothers and sisters, I don't believe that believers today give the written word of God the respect it deserves. Many of us just look at this Bible and say, oh, I read my Bible. Oh, I got to read my Bible again. But we don't understand that this written word is God's word. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, given by the breath of God. Inspiration, the word inspiration there means that God breathed into each of the writers of this book what he wanted them to say. And I, I, I am wondering if we understand this is God's word. This doesn't just contain God's word. This is God's word. This is God speaking. Someone says, I want God to talk to me. Open your Bible. Oh, I want to hear the voice of God. Open your Bible. This is the number one way God talks to his people. The written word of God. This is the number one way. No other way trumps it. Every other way that he speaks is supposed to be judged in the light of what is in the written word of God. You say why? Because God's spirit inspired this word and he will never contradict it. Never, not once. He will never contradict what he has placed in the written word. So um, judge all impressions, judge all voices, judge all um, prophecies, judge all dreams, judge all visions. Judge all of when people tell you the Lord, tell them to tell you in the light of the written word of God. I, I remember uh, um, sometime back someone came and said to me, someone prophesied and told me that someone was waking witchcraft on me. And I just said, well, the word of God says no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. The word of God says in the book of Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you authority or power, Greek word, there's authority, exousia, to, to um, tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In other words, I don't care if people are waking witchcraft on you or not. You just stand on the written word of God and say, Father, I thank you, no weapon form against me shall prosper, and every tongue that has risen against me in judgment in Jesus' name, I condemn it. And go about your way full of peace, full of joy, full of excitement, 
never let the devil get you down by, by having people tell you um, someone wake and suck mad you you don't have to ever 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 I mean dear God what you should do is voice out laughing <laughs> voice out laughing because you know first John 4 4 greater is he the Holy Spirit that is in you than the devil that is in the world you know that God is with you and because God is with you who can be against you you don't have to fear the devil child of God you have authority over that rat okay so you just, just just throw that away don't even uh, um, allow yourself to get fearful because God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind second Timothy 1 verse 7 so um, um let the word of God be your first and your last word let this be your alpha and omega word let this be the word by which you judge all of the things uh, uh, um, that you experience when people um, say the Lord say or whether it's dreams or visions or impressions or I think God talking to me we'll go and check the word out and find out if it's in line with the written word of God all right and so you, you you may say well bishop well can't you just go you know i get this feeling or this impression never judge your life life by feelings okay um for instance there are some people who may feel like they say it because they jump around in church when the music is right but they may have never accepted jesus as their lord and their savior will they not say there are many people, I found out early in my Christian walk, that there are a lot of people who have never done what the Bible says to do to be saved. You say, well, I've been going to church all my life. That don't mean you're saved. You say, well, I read my Bible every day. Well, that don't mean you're saved. That's a good thing to do, to go to church. That's a good thing to do. You should. That's a good thing to do. You should read your Bible every day. But that don't mean you're saved. You say, well, um, I pray every day to pray to our Father prayer. That don't mean you're saved. And it's good to pray, but that don't mean you're saved. You should pray, but that don't mean you have to do what the Bible says to do to be saved. You say, well, I feel saved. That don't mean you're saved. But how do I know I'm saved? Romans 10 and 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's how you know you're saved. You know you're saved because you give your life to Jesus and make him your Lord and Savior. And you don't do that with your mind. You do that with your mouth. You do it verbally. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you see? That's how you be saved. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus is my Lord. That's how you be saved, you see? And so there are a lot of things that are going around where people are trying to say they believe this is God and they believe that is God and all that kind of stuff. But what we should always be doing is going back to the written word and saying, is that in line with the Bible? Is that in line with the word? There are times people have been thinking that things were, think, were God. And when I heard it, I'd say, but that's not in line with the word. That's not the word. That's not the word. I don't care who it is. I don't care uh, um, if the person uh, um, is um, accurate to the T. I always aim to judge what I'm hearing in line with the written word of God. Because anybody could miss it. I've missed it plenty of times. I believe, uh, I don't know of no person who hasn't, hasn't missed it. I remember a man of God who I was highly respected as a prophet of God. Highly respected. Still respect him as a great man of God. But he's gone on to be with the Lord now. But he would always say, he said, I've missed it plenty of times. And then he would say, um, I, I'm going to um, leave it for those of you who never miss it to judge me. All of us have missed it because all of us are still um, in this flesh body. All of us have had time and we may have thought God said something to us and found out later that it wasn't the Lord. Uh, um, we're learning as we go, you see. But the more you walk with him and the more you walk in the light of his word and the more you spend time praying uh, um, and praying in the Holy Ghost, you learn his voice more and more. There are all kinds of voices in the world. First Corinthians 14 and verse 10 says. Uh, um, and so you, you have to be able to learn to discern the voice of God. And you learn that um, through experience and through walking with him and through learning how to know those inward impressions, those inward nudgings and promptings when he gives them to us um, to let us know that something is wrong or to let us know um, a direction that he wants us to go. So I, I really just want to 
emphasize to you in point number one because we're really running out of time and we can probably get into point number two before uh, um, our time is up um, but please judge everything and I'm glad that we took enough a lot of this time to talk about judging things in the light of the word because that is the number one place where I see people miss it they do not judge things and line things up with the scriptures they judge based on oh, how they feel at the spur of the moment or oh, how they feel when the person prophesied to them or when the person lay hand on them listen to me judge things in the light of the written word is what's being said to you in line with the written word of God is it in line with the word all right um so i encourage you to read your bible every day spend time praying every day but read your bible every day so that when things are said to you or things are said to the entire congregation you could look and judge things in line with the written word of god all right number two how is the prophet or prophetess living how do they treat god's people let me read a scripture to you real quick because like I said our time is is going Matthew chapter 7 Jesus himself told us how we can know the false prophets Matthew the seventh chapter and I'm going to read here praise the name of the Lord I'm going to read here in Matthew chapter number 7 I'm over in chapter 10 sorry Matthew chapter 7 I'm going to read here from verse number 15 Jesus said beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, well, how will we be able to know them, Jesus? He said, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree which bring it um, bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth co evil fruit. Now, hold up, hold up. Jesus said the way to know true ministers from false ones is by their fruit notice that now not by their gifts by their fruit not by how much they could prophesy but by their fruit not by how much they can um, uh, um, say the Lord tell me to tell you but by their fruits now what's he talking about well uh, um, he's talking here when you deal with fruit in scripture and particularly in the New Testament he's dealing with by their character how they live how they conduct their lives how they conduct themselves not how they are just when they're in the pulpit how they live we shall know you shall know them by their character oh wow well I, I, I want to point, point out something here and just think with me a minute about this um, Jesus gave a new commandment to the church in John the 13th chapter 34th and 35th verses he says a new commandment give I unto you that you love one another even as I have loved you now watch this he said in verse 35 by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another now hold up let's take a look at this a minute how will we know how will people know that we're jesus disciples by our love in other words by character not by whether how much we can speak in tongues not by how much scripture we could quote not by um how good we could preach how good we could teach how good we could sing jesus said they'll know we're we're his disciples by how we treat people, by our love, by our character. Well, we know that, that love is the fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians, the 5th chapter and 22nd and 23rd verses. He said, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love. You see, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, uh, and, and temperance, which is self-control. But really, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And out of love comes those other, other uh, um, um, traits of love, which is joy, peace, long suffering, and so forth and so on. Um, but if you look in Galatians, it didn't say the fruits of the Spirit, it said fruit, you see? He's talking about character of love. And out of that character of love comes all those other character traits. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's look back at this a minute. Jesus said, you're going to know the true and false ministers of the gospel. You're going to know the true and false prophets by their fruits, not by their gifts 
but by how they love, how they treat people, how they treat God's people, how they live. Are they living clean, holy lives? Are they walking upright before God? Are they treating God's people right? We sh you shall know them by their character. You know, if you have a person who's running around from woman to woman and then comes saying, the Lord tell me to tell you, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not even going to let them lay their hand on me. They're not touching me. You say, why? Because I, I, I don't judge you by how you say the Lord say to tell me. I judge you by your character, by your character. Um, there's some some preachers. I'm sorry to say, there's some preachers. I'm not gonna go in here and preach. You say why? Because of how they live, their character. Your character speaks for you. Your character reveals who you are. Someone has said your character is how you live when people ain't even seem to be watching. When you're out of the spotlight, how are you living? How how are you behaving? How are you treating people when you're not in the pulpit preaching? How are you treating the members of your family? How are you treating your spouse? How are you treating your children? How are you treating people? Uh, uh, um, how, are you hurting people? Uh, are you always trying to find a way to hurt people? Are you always treating people as if they're beneath you, as if people don't matter, as, as if you're it and, and what, you, what you want is what... Uh, um, it has to be because you're it after all. Uh, um, God anoints you and God ain't anoint them and therefore they're nothing. No, no, my brothers and sisters, we have to watch our character. Ministers of the gospel, we have to watch how we treat and handle God's people. They're not our people. They're God's people. They're not our sheep. They're God's sheep. And we have to be careful how we treat them. We have to make sure that we live as an example before them of the character of Christ. Uh, um, I, I just want to remind all of you that that's really the golden rule. The, 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 the commandment of love is the golden rule. Which is the golden rule? According to Matthew chapter 7, I believe it's verse 12, that we are to do unto others even as we would have them do unto us. Now, here's the thing. He didn't say do unto others as they do unto us. He said do unto them as we would have them do unto us. Well, how do we want people to treat us? Do we want them to talk to us with respect? Then we should be talking to people with respect. How do we want them to treat us? Do we want them to serve us? Then we should be aiming to serve others. How do we want to be treated? That's how we're supposed to treat people. We want people to be faithful to us? Then we need to learn to be faithful to people. You know, and, and just walk in the character of Christ. Uh, and so that's the second way that you judge whether or not a person is really from the Lord. Watch their character. Watch how they live. Watch how they behave, even when they're not preaching and when they're not teaching. Watch how they behave. What is the motivation of their heart? It'll be revealed in their character. What are they all about? It'll be revealed in their character. My brothers and my sisters, I am so uh, um, appalled and I really don't like how some ministers have treated God's people. We People treat them like, like you know, you're beneath me. Uh, and like, you know, I can talk to you however I want and I can do to you whatever I want because I'm the man or the woman of God, you know, and, uh, and you are beneath me. And my brothers and sisters, that's not the love of Christ. That's not the love of God in action. That is not the character of Christ. And the Holy Spirit will never, 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 never move a person to behave in a manner that's outside and contrary to the character of Christ. Yes, when we preach, we preach the Word of God. Yes, when we teach, we teach the Word of God. But then we also have the responsibility, added responsibility, of living the Word of God. So if we preach to people and say, you ought to love one another, then we better love people. If we preach to one another and say, you should be respectful to one another, then we need to learn how to respect people. Uh, and we, if we, whatever we tell people that they're supposed to do, we're supposed to be the example. We're supposed to live that way, you see. And so I, I encourage you to, to, to really take a look at even your personal character. Are we lining up with the, with the admonition of the Lord? to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Not as they do unto us, but as we would have them do unto us. Are we bearing the fruit of the Spirit? Are we bearing fruit 
for the kingdom of God. Are we walking in Galatians chapter 5, verse 20, uh, 22 and 23? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Are we treating people right? Are we treating God's people right? Listen, we're out of time. We got um, six more um, steps for judging prophecy um, to go. So you will get to hear them as we go along. And um, we'll have to take, I thought we were going to end the series today on prophecy, but we'll have to go further uh, um, next week. God bless you and we love you. So glad that you joined us for this time in God's word today. And we want you please to go ahead if you want to see other videos coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International. Subscribe to this particular page. Like us on Facebook at Jesus CCMI. And by the way, if you have prayer requests, please email us. Our email address will be on the screen in just a moment. Email us and let us know how we can pray for you. Until we meet together again around God's word, remember Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows.